Hey there, good people. It's your Cripple Critic, and uh, I want to apologize for the air conditioning in the background. Summer came a month early where I live. Anyway, this week I want to talk about the action adventure game Extinction. Extinction is a game developed by Iron Galaxy and published by Maximum Games. If you're familiar with the anime Attack on Titan or the subsequent game series that it was based on the show, then you'll get the basics of the gameplay in Extinction. I can't find anywhere that says that the developers were inspired by this series, but there sure are a lot of similarities. In Extinction, you're a soldier rescuing refugees and protecting a city from a giant monster, in this case an ogre. The monster breaks down city walls so you have a limited amount of time to stop it before it kills everyone. You also get to gruesomely chop each individual limb off in order to finish it. And that's basically the whole game. So, I hadn't heard great things about Extinction when it came out, but I was pretty excited to play this game ever since I saw footage of it last year at E3. I mean, it looked like Shadow of the Colossus meets Attack on Titan. How could they mess that up? Well, I played it, and they did mess it up. It's bad. It's very bad. For one, the game doesn't look any different than how it was when they released beta footage at E3. The towns and countrysides in the game look strangely barren and devoid of any signs of people living in them. Yes, they did add NPCs in the final game, but they don't really do anything but stand around waiting to be killed by the ogre or for you to rescue them. But the biggest problem for me has to do with the accessibility options, and there are very little of them in the game. Not to mention the controls are so unforgiving, I couldn't even get past the first level in the game. So let's get into the controls. There are no difficulty levels to choose from, and I think having them really would have helped because this game requires a lot of multitasking. What I mean is, there are moments where you have to do timed movements and precision aiming. You move with the left control stick and aim the camera with the right control stick. Regular attacks are done with the square button, and the grappling mechanism is done by pressing R1. L1 and L2 are used to fire your special move, which is called a rune strike, and it lets you cut down the ogre's limbs. This is where I had the most trouble. Defeating the ogre was impossible to me, because in order to cut off its arms and legs, you have to press several buttons at once and aim the camera with the right control stick. There are weak points at the base of the knee, the head, and elbow that you must aim at precisely, or you won't hurt the creature at all. Despite how big the ogre looked, being 150 feet tall, their attacks are pretty freaking fast, and they can kill you in one or two hits. Unfortunately, the amount of damage they deliver is kind of random, so you won't always know what to expect. However, it doesn't take long before you're crushed like a grape under the ogre's foot and having to start all over from the beginning of the mission. There are red highlighted areas that appear on the ogre's body to let you know where to slice, but you have to get very close to the spot for your attacks to connect. There's no use in trying to get to a safe area and attack the ogre long range because Extinction won't let you try unless you're in the area it wants you to be. The grappling mechanism does sometimes help you by letting you get to different parts of the map quickly. It works similarly to how the grappling hook in the Batman Arkham Asylum game did, blasting on to tall buildings and quickly pushing you higher up. However, Extinction puts these latch on points in really confusing places. It's not very clear whether you're grabbing onto a tree or a building and you won't really know if your character will be flung in the complete opposite direction that you intended. Suffice it to say, disabled gamers with fine motor skill impairments will have an extremely difficult time playing this. It was inaccessible to me and even using the PlayStation 4's built-in remappable control options, I couldn't maneuver the controls. The gameplay required too much physical effort. For gamers with visual impairments, I didn't notice too many obstacles, although the screen can sometimes get cluttered with large hint and reminder bubbles that pop up way too often. A brightness slider is available in the options menu, but the game is fairly bright as it is. There's a chance colorblind players will have trouble during the ogre fights, because the signifying targets for cutting its limbs are red and overlaid on giant green body parts. Extinction definitely makes sure to tell you and explain how to attack using repetitive audio cues, 
But like I talked about earlier, you have to be very precise with your aiming and how close you are to the monster. Some colorblind players may not be able to see these target areas correctly. Otherwise, the visuals are clear. The only useful accessibility option that Extinction has are subtitles. Thankfully, deaf players will at least have the ability to understand what characters are saying. Although, once you get a load of the story they have, that may not be such a good thing. The subtitle font is very large though, and there are dark backgrounds built into the dialogue boxes. The subtitles are not always consistent, unfortunately. Some background dialogue can be heard, but not captioned. So, like I said before, the gameplay in Extinction is basically just fighting the giant ogres. Sometimes it will try to pad the experience by giving you busy work. This includes things like teleporting civilians away and fighting these mini troll creatures known as the Raveni until the ogre shows up. There's like a five hour campaign mode and another mode where you can do individual challenges against other players online. The story in Instinction is gobbledygook nonsense. Just a bunch of fancy-esque words strung together to make the game sound different and unique, but it's really a basic plot. I mean, just listen to this forced exposition at the beginning of the game. Avil, did you make it to Delorum? Yes. I've almost reached the village of Tablis. You were right, Sandra. I've teleported escape crystals onto the battlefield. You need only use one of the runestones I gave you to activate them. I don't understand what's happening. What are those things? Who are you? My name is Avil, the last of the Sentinels. I am here to ready your people for war. I, I don't know anything about fighting monsters. Take this gemstone and personally see that your king receives it. And when he does, tell him to speak my name into the stone. It's like they thought they needed to justify this insane setup with a really silly and boring story. I say, why didn't they just let players roam around, fight ogres, and make up their own backstory for what's going on? It would have been a lot better than this. By far the worst thing about the story is having to listen to this extremely annoying NPC character. Her name is Andra, and you will hate her. She acts as a narrator for the game and also backup for you during combat. But all she ever does is scream at you, scream commands, give you awkward and out of place compliments and shout really obvious things that you could have figured out on your own. The jackals are hunting down civilians. Now charge the crystal to activate the portal and rescue the civilian. The enemy has started killing civilians. Avil, you must act quickly. Avil, you should rescue the civilians if you can. Use your basic attacks to slay them before they slaughter the villagers. Are you freaking telling me there wasn't one playtester that said this was a bad idea? Just one that said, hey, this NPC is not really helpful and actually distracting you from the game. Not one? Really? Good to see my portals are holding up. And when you do speak with the king, may I suggest employing a morsel? Executing Raveni requires rune energy. Charge your rune energy by killing J I could have sworn that one had Avil, get after that Raveni before he starts destroying the- Avil, valid rune strike targets will glow when- Avil, you remember how this works. Why? Why? Just stop it. Just stop it. It's like the game can't go five seconds without reminding you of something because they think you're too stupid to remember to do anything or focus on anything. The dialogue is so poorly implemented and broken that she keeps talking to you even after you die. Great job, Avil. Now aim your rune strike just below the Raveni's knee to sever its leg. I suppose I understand that accessibility options and their rules are a relatively new thing. And I know that Iron Galaxy doesn't have a whole lot of games they've made under their belt. But I don't know, I'm looking at this long list of ports that they've been involved with. So you'd think they'd... Yeah, that explains a lot. So I'm really struggling to find good things to say about Extinction. I thought the art style was nice, and the ogres had a pretty cool design. The game was just inaccessible to me, and I kind of felt like I wasted my time. If they had some sort of camera assist, that could have helped when aiming at the ogres. But instead, disabled gamers with fine motor skill impairments 
will have a really hard time playing this. Yeah, I guess I could complain that it was a $60 game that only had a 5 hour story, but I can't really say much because of how little of the game I was actually able to play. Hopefully, the studio will learn from this. Alright guys, so that was Extinction. Maybe next week I'll have a better game to review. But tell me what you think. Were you happy with the gameplay? What do you think about the NPCs? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I will see you later.